In the midst of the death of Big Nut, the war between YFN and YSL was heating up in the streets. During this time, a lot of the beef in the area was kept offline, especially considering the fact that in 2015, when Nut's life was taken, both Thug and Lucci were still relatively early on in their careers. So at this point, the kind of gang-related activity going on around these two artists was subject to far less scrutiny. However, in 2016, as YFN Lucci's career begins to pick up steam and he appears in a number of on-camera interviews, he reveals just how real his life in the streets of Atlanta has truly gotten, telling Karen Civil that his family home had been the target of numerous shootings. When well, my house got shot up, I was out of town though, man. I get a call, my mom don't say the house got shot. They ain't even pull up in front of the house. They pull up like right here and they they were just shooting it, like, you know, sideways behind the car in the street. They was in the street, though, soon, because they were out of the cell, boy. Yes, apparently the ops were pulling up at YFN Lucci's house and straight spraying it up. But that wasn't the only time. Apparently they came back, and this time Lucci's own mother was left injured. He ain't even really one said. He like, how did he say it happened again? We hop out, we come over here. Jew was in here, my big brother, Jew. Jew, Jew was in here, my baby mama and my little girl and my mom and her friend. Both of them got shot though, my mom and her friend. Whilst he was forthcoming to Karen Civil about the details of the shooting, when asked about who did it in a Vlad TV interview, Lucci was much less forthcoming. You don't know who did it. Street code, right? <laughs> <laughs> So, at this point, the stakes in the streets of Atlanta are getting very high. And when mothers are getting hit, you know that the beef is serious. But even worse than involving mothers is involving children. And as the beef goes on, you will see that rappers on both sides of this feud aren't afraid to take it there, bringing their own ops kids into the beef just to goad their rivals. In February 2016, YFN Lucci took to Instagram to wish young thug's daughter a happy birthday, posting a video of her face, which I'm definitely not going to put in this video. An incredibly ominous and serious message from YFN Lucci to young thug. But in spite of this kind of bold message sent on social media for the whole world to see, Lucci wasn't done prodding Thug. That same month, he also took to Twitter, saying that Young Thug's fiance Jerrica misses being on the couch with Lucci. He went on to infer that Young Thug would cry if he saw the DMs between Lucci and Jerrica. Lucci would go on to post the unverified but supposed messages between him and Jerrica, which weren't really damning or necessarily verifiable, but at the very least, if true, they would infer that Jerrica had been to visit Lucci. Anyway, Lucci attempted to back up that unverifiable screen grab with a tweet saying, true story, and another saying that he's got someone's hoe on a leech, going on to infer that he stole a rich person's girl, and asking Jerrica directly saying that he misses her, shooting out another tweet to suggest that her denying this is a lie. And finally, ending his tirade by tweeting out three L's which I assume were aimed at Young Thug. Now, Thug eventually replied in a tweet suggesting that Lucci was just looking for clout, and another saying that if a rapper wants to come up, they should collab rather than trying to start beef. A month after this, in March 2016, Lucci does an interview with DJ Small's Eyes, where he suggests that he doesn't even know who Young Thug is. You and Thug. I don't know him. Never heard of him. Now, at a certain point, it would make sense for Lucci to set his pride and this beef to one side and focus on his buzzing music career. By this point, Lucci was just about getting to that next level. Since joining up with CEO Fly of Think It's A Game Entertainment, he'd gone on to drop his follow-up mixtape, Wish Me Well 2, just about landing in on the Billboard charts at position 183. This would be Lucci's first real chart hit, with Lucci and Fly both pulling up for a celebratory interview on The Breakfast Club. And in this interview, Lucci had some choice words, not just for Young Thug, but also his fiance, Jerrica. Doubling down on his earlier tweet shooting his shot at her, with Lucci saying he'll holler at whoever he wants. Now I saw you um, also was tweeting at um, Young Thug's fiance. If, if that were his girl, that were his girl. You smell me? Okay, so you didn't know, maybe. Hey man, we in the street, man. I met everybody. Not long after brushing off the Young Thug drama, Lucci would go on in this interview to boldly proclaim that he is still tied in with the streets and that everybody he keeps around him now has street credentials. We ain't got time to hang in the streets, man. We been did that. What about your circle of people that was with you in Atlanta before everything started moving? They still with me. YFN BC. Mm -hmm. Like, all of us, we grew up together. Blood brothers to best friends, and we were like eight, so you know. Yeah, that really it can get. But ironically, while Lucci is breaking into the charts for the first time, still maintaining his ties to the streets, Young Thug's career is progressing at lightning speed. Let's not forget, as Lucci was just signing his very first deals, Young Thug was running around on yachts with Birdman, living the lifestyle, and slowly putting together a string of hits. While Lucci was making baby steps, Young Thug, who had had a head start of a couple of years, was making huge strides. In mid-2014, Young Thug signed to 300 Entertainment, and in 2015, in response to a large amount of his music leaking, Thug would end up dropping a colossal amount of music. His controversial Barter 6 project released, with the album's title Barter 6, sparking a furious feud with Lil Wayne, who had named a number 
number of his albums The Carter, with this feud ultimately culminating in Lil Wayne's tour bus being shot up by an affiliate of Young Thug and Birdman, an incident that I covered in a separate video years ago on this channel. Go check that out if you haven't. But anyway, following the huge success of Barter 6, Thug would then go on to drop two installments of his Slime Season mixtape series to an overwhelmingly positive response. The first of which featured the classic Young Thug single Best Friend, which itself charted at 45 on Billboard, with these moves putting Young Thug in a prime position for an enormous 2016. And whilst YFN Lucci was getting his very first Billboard successes with his Wish Me Well 2 mixtape, Young Thug was going mainstream. He'd landed a Calvin Klein campaign. He dropped charting singles with Travis Scott and Usher, a third installment of his Slime Season mixtape, and probably most iconic of all was his enormous album release Jeffrey, coming along with that famous cover art where Young Thug wore a dress. Now Jeffrey and its cross-dressing cover art stoked a lot of discussion in hip-hop about masculinity, gender, and self-image in a genre of music that's generally not known for its dress-wearing rappers. Now Thug would later go on to try and reclaim some gangster points, suggesting that the only reason he wore a dress is so that he could hide an AK-47 under it, but the reality is, a gangster throwing a dress on on the cover of their album is always going to generate a lot of attention and sales. Jeffrey was a huge success, peaking at number 8 on Billboard and frankly bringing the discourse in hip-hop forward about 10 years. After Jeffrey, Young Thug had cemented himself as a trap rap icon, and as a result the streams and sales were rolling in. Young Thug was one of the hottest commodities in town and everyone was lining up to throw a bag at him. So following the successful launch of Jeffrey, Young Thug would finally be in prime position to put into action his plan of making everybody around him a millionaire at which point he worked closely with Liar Cohen of 300 Entertainment to launch his own sub-record label, YSL. Now to this day, it's still not definitively clear what the S in YSL stands for. Is it Young Stoner Life? Young Slime Life? Young Slapped Life? It doesn't really matter, because Young Thug had finally and truly bossed up, escaping the blocks of Cleveland Avenue, making a whole bunch of hit records, and using his movement in the music industry to finally bring his vision for a label to life, and legitimately put on all of the friends and family who had been there with him, helping him survive from the early days in the trenches. This was an incredible achievement for Young Thug that likely inspired many more aspiring rappers to do the very same. And in the following year, YFN Lucci would try and level up too, making bigger inroads into the music industry and building himself an empire. However, unfortunately, as Lucci was growing in the music business, his past ties to the streets remained. And as he would continue to use his music to reflect on his dark past, sadly that same past would come back to haunt him. 